Spearing City Boy is a revolutionary mobile tower crane that's been under development for a number of years. Here it's on display at the Baumer exhibition in 2019, and there was a prototype of the model of it also on display. Fast forward and here is the model of the Spearing's City Boy, and it's been produced by WSI Models. Mobile tower cranes are very complex machines in real life, and that means that making a model is also very challenging. Out of the Spearing's branded box comes the usual pair of expanded polystyrene trays, and we can see that the model is secured to the bottom tray by twist ties. But on the plus side there's no tape to cut, because the trays are clipped together by plastic formers. After getting out some bags of parts we can release the model itself, and to do that, we have fun undoing the twist ties. The model is also carefully secured in various ways for shipping, so there are various tapes and elastic bands in use. The model comes with a printed booklet, but for the review model I'm using an electronic version. It starts off talking about the real crane, and one of its innovations is that it can operate in an entirely electric mode, so that's particularly good for city centre working. The crane also has only one cabin, and that's used for both driving on the road and operating the crane. The booklet then has some details explaining how the crane operates and its flexibility in configuration, and that includes some technical details about the chassis. After that we move on to the model, and it warns you to handle it with care because it's delicate and there's a full parts list. After that there are many pages detailing the assembly of the model. The real crane has a telescopic end section at the end of the jib, and it's not been possible to model that functionality in 1 to 50 scale, so you get the extra section which has to be attached separately. This is a compromise, so it does mean you can't quite configure the crane properly in travelling mode, but we'll try our best to get it in road going formation. So we will deviate from the instruction book a little, and we start by taking off the elastic bands. Out of the box the seat in the cab is laid back for crane operating mode, and you can't drive along the road like that so we need to alter it. It's nice that that functionality is provided on the model, and to get to it what we need to do is to raise the tower, and then slide the cab up and off its running rail so that we can adjust the seat angle. Once that's done we're correctly configured for the road, so we replace the cab back on its running rail, and then lower down the tower. In travelling mode the real crane is fully rigged, and we can't quite achieve that on the model but we can add on the trolley, and although it should probably be positioned close into the tower, we will need to be a little bit more flexible and put it on where we can make it fit. So we'll just slide it on as you can see here. Next we can add some detailing and that includes two handrails, and these get dropped into preformed holes at the front of the carrier. Four spreader plates are included with the model, and a nice touch is that they can be carried in storage boxes at the side of the outriggers. To tidy up the appearance we'll move any rope bundles out of view, and when we've done that we get a model that looks good in road going formation. But this model has really been designed to show the crane erected, so let's get on and do that. We'll follow the order given in the instruction manual and start by pulling out the outriggers and the pads get lowered in the usual way. The range of movement on the outriggers is good, so you can hold the model wheels free, and the outrigger beams are reasonably straight, and you can make them straighter if you retract them a bit. The next step is to raise the tower from the transport position, and that works quite smoothly. When it's near vertical you need to take out the pin at the bottom, and then carefully line up all the holes and put the pin back. At this point the manual suggests installing some more detail and that's three more handrails. And then it's back to erection and firstly we need to remove the luffing gear. And that's just a temporary step while we stretch out the telescopic tower. There are various locking points so you can configure different heights, although the parts of the model work best when the tower is fully extended. 
and that's because the running rail of the cab is a fixed length. Because we're in crane mode, we need to move the seat in the cab from the road driving position to the crane driving position. And then we put the cab back on the rail. We're now ready to separate out the jib. And at this point, the two main pieces are not connected. So to join them up, we'll stretch out the jib and use a steel pin to make the connection. Once the jib is joined together, we can then open up the support system. And this is all pre-assembled on the model, so that makes it easier. We can then bring back the tie bar that's attached to the luffing gear and join it up using a brass nut and bolt. To raise the jib up to a horizontal position, we use the key that's supplied with the model. And we can use it to operate the winch, which has a positive brake action. A plus point is that the rope assembly system on the jib is pre-reeved in the factory. And you can also operate it using a key in another winch. That allows the whole system to be tightened up. But one thing noticed on the review model was that the reeving probably wasn't done quite correctly. And the rope wasn't running where it should. But it is something a skilled collector could easily change. Now it's time to remember the telescopic part that isn't telescopic. And we need to fit that to the end of the jib. It gets secured at the top by a tiny brass nut and bolt. And it's fixed at the bottom with a steel pin. With the jib complete we can feed our trolley back on. And it moves easily along the jib. The model has ropes for the trolley movement. And they are wound on a drum but it's non-functional. Although it does seem possible that a skilled modeler would be able to configure it to get it to work. But out of the box it's only there for detail rather than functionality. We've reeved up the hook on the model and the rope tends to twist a bit. So it helps to add the small load that's supplied with the model. And that makes it all look better. Next we have to add on two rails for the cab to be able to go up the tower. And although these are telescopic on the real crane, it's too difficult to model those in 1 to 50 scale. So instead they are supplied as fixed length parts. Once the rails are on, we can wind the cab to the top of the tower, and then the model is completely assembled. We'll start by diving underneath the model and it is very detailed. Not just the suspension and transmission components, but there's an unusually high amount of detail on other parts of the chassis. The model also has decent looking road tyres. The cab has got some nice sharp graphics on the door and the window frames are all delineated. And it's nice that the mirror assemblies are also metal. Moving down there are textured steps to the cab. The outrigger pads are stowed inboard, and the wheels have detail. At the front there are small round lights, which match the original. On each side of the body there is a winch axle visible, and there are more nice sharp graphics. The securing pin has got a large yellow handle, but it's perhaps a little bit too big because it sticks out from the footprint of the vehicle, and a smaller sized handle would have looked better. At the back there's space for a number plate and what looks like two video cameras. The carrier deck has got nice textured surfaces. The outrigger beams have got attractive chevron graphics. The pistons have smooth faces and both the pads and the spreader plates are nicely modelled. There are some other nice touches on the crane body including tiny beacon lights at the back and also a small exhaust pipe. Also modelled just behind the tower are the pulleys for the tower raising system and they are tiny and made of metal. At the bottom of the tower there's some nice lattice work for the control cables and there is other detailing of the mast raising system. The cab rail is a nice representation of the real thing and in crane mode we can also notice that the cab has got a computer monitor. All of the tyre bars and related components on the model are made of metal and that includes the fin rams. The lattice work on the jib is fully modelled and that includes both sides and also the underneath. 
Tiny metal pulleys are used on the jib for guiding ropes. The model of the telescopic section has black rails, and that's like the original and is a tiny beacon light at the end. The metal trolley has unusual high detail, and the small metal hook has chevron graphics. In terms of geometry, the jib's not perfectly straight from this angle, but in reality it looks pretty good from any normal viewing angles. In terms of functionality, each of the axles has independent steering, so it's possible to replicate any steering modes of the real crane. The steering angles are also good. Another nice touch is that there is fully sprung suspension on each axle. Let's get the city boy out on the street, and with some downward pressure, all of the wheels are fully grounded. There is some friction in the axle, so it's not quite free rolling. And let's proceed to set the steering to see how tight a turn we can achieve. And it's good enough for those tight turns on your desktop. And if you want your city boy to have a spring in its step, then you can see that those are provided. The real crane is unusual because the turntable is not centered on the carrier and is actually off to one side. And that has been replicated on the model. In terms of functionality, the rotation of the crane is very smooth. Using the key, we can operate the main winch, and it also has a spring loaded positive brake action. So, if you like weightlifting, you can lift some weights. There is another small feature on the crane body, and that is the access ladder, and that can be lowered down. It's also possible to replicate luffing the jib of the crane, and this is used on the real crane to give some additional hook height. Although this model starts out small, once it's fully assembled, it's quite large, so let's do a dim check. And in normal mode to the top, it's 66 centimeters or 26 inches. The total jib length is around 32 inches or 82 centimeters. This is possibly one of the most complicated machines to model in 1 to 50 scale. That does mean there are some compromises, but WSI has made a really good job of it. In particular, it's highly detailed and high quality, and when it's fully assembled, it looks realistic. Overall, this model is rated as excellent. Music